So a huge report has come out. In fact, this is a report that many people had been asking that it be made public for over a year now. And one of those individuals was, well, a Hillsong pastor in Phoenix, Arizona, by the name of Terry Crist, who during a March 27th service had even said and mentioned and referenced everything that went down at Hillsong NYC and their former pastor, Carl Lentz. Well, that report has now been made public. There is a lot to get to in this, and I'll do my best to go through it with you guys in just a second. First, if you could, please like this video, share it, hit the bell, subscribe, or the glasses because I'm blind. Also, guys, I remind you, if you were able to make a generous donation here to my ministry to help support my content and make an end-time Bible prophecy headlines, you can help me out over on PayPal. That link is down below, or you can sign up on the Patreon. Just five bucks a month. When you do that, you will get all the alerts for these new videos, the new content when it comes out, because YT barely pushes it out to you guys anymore. So that's a little perk for you there. Plus, you can leave your comments 100% censorship free. You can send me direct messages. And don't forget, these videos also go out on my Rumble page. So make sure you give me a sub there. It also serves as a backup in case I get the boot off YT. So you might want to get in the habit of just checking me out on Rumble from time to time. All those links are down below. A big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so. Thank you as well. Your generosity greatly appreciated. With all the, the scandals, everything coming out with Hillsong over the course of the past really three weeks, there's been a lot. And I have been covering it. And I said that, look, this is going to go on for some time. There's going to be more information that's going to come out. It's seemingly, you know, every day we're getting a new piece of information. So this was interesting because, as I mentioned, a Hillsong Phoenix, which will be getting a, a new name because they have now separated from Hillsong, you know, the global Hillsong, as many other Hillsong churches in the United States have now done and renamed, rebranded, all of that. Well, Terry Chris during a March 27th service, had addressed all of what was going on and said that he was one of the individuals that had called for that report on Hillsong NYC and Carl Lentz to be made public. But Hillsong did not want to do so. And he said the reason for that is because they wanted to do more to protect their brand and their image than actually protecting the people that were hurt, that were affected by this, all the staff, the volunteers, the women that Carl Lentz had, uh, you know, done those things with, all of that. And then Terry Crist had, well, called for an investigation into the global board and their mishandling of all of this. He says, look, there is corruption there. These people need to be held accountable for the part and the role that they played. So all that being said, now, just about two weeks later, we get the release of this report on Carl Lentz. Now, you got to remember, this report was done. They, they conducted interviews and did all of this starting right at the end of 2020. Remember, Carl Lentz was fired from Hillsong NYC in November of 2020. They started an investigation, which then at the time, Brian Houston had said that they were going to. And then the report finally came out in 2021. A couple of months later, but it was not released public. We had heard the stories. I had reported on it. You know, Carl Lentz, obviously the affairs, all of that came out. But what about the inner workings behind the scenes? What was taking place there in NYC? Well, this was a big report. And I'm going to go through some of that with you. Now, I'm going to let you guys know, I will put the link in the description. If you want to read the entirety of of the report because there's some things in there that I can't really say here on uh, YT for obvious reasons. So uh, I'll kind of, you know, try and craft my words creatively talking about some of this stuff, but you can read again in full if you'd like. But let's talk about, well, let's talk about the staff first because in the volunteers and how Carl Lentz had treated them, many of them, no, there's all these depositions were released, had said that Carl Lentz had caused many of them to develop mental illness because of his abusive type of manipulation, the way that he ran the church, the way that he, he, he basically had acted like a dictator amongst these individuals. Some of them had said in their interviews that they had to check into rehab for what Lentz had done. And that many of them didn't speak out because always there's this fear of retaliation if you speak out against anybody with Hillsong, then you're going to get yourself into some trouble. And they've noted that. 
a lot of the other ones had talked about, well, the fact that Carl Lentz had abused the staff to a point where, you know, he would have multiple drivers that would basically need to be made available 24-7 at his beckoning call. Be ready to take me wherever it is that I want to go. Some of them said that, well, he made his drivers take him to nightclubs where they would have to wait four or five hours sometimes for Carl Lentz to be out there partying in the clubs and then they'd have to sit there, wait, take him home, that they'd have to make special trips to his house in the middle of the night. One employee had recounted the time where Lentz had called into the home at about 1.15 in the morning to set up a drum set in the house for his son's birthday party. Because Lentz couldn't do that himself, so he made a staff worker do that. See, he was more interested in having slaves than he was actual staff. He wanted servants, is what Lentz wanted. Because as a big Megasong Hill, uh, Hillsong pastor, well, of course, that you need to have all these people doing all of this work for you. You don't have to do any of it yourself. You would have to come over. And if they didn't, and if they gave him any sort of lip on it, then he would berate them and he would go off on them and make all sorts of threats. Lentz denied this particular allegation, saying he didn't recall that. Well, interesting. Because you got to think that a lot of the, the interview that Carl Lentz gave, too, this is this is all on the disposition here. Now, there were some things that Lentz couldn't comment on because of agreements that he made with Hillsong as part of his little separation package there. But nevertheless, this sort of behavior with the staff had continued. Others noting that, well, Lentz would require two drivers, two drivers, two people to come with him to the airport, one to take him to the airport and back. And then another would have to go to pick up his luggage. No, he didn't touch his own luggage. No, they had to do that. Pick up his luggage, bring it in the car, and then drive it to his house for him. Again, his hands are clean. These people are just treated as his basic slaves and servants. In all things, this is what they did. They ran. He ran these people into the ground 24-7 serving his every need. Anything that Lentz wanted, he received. Now, during the investigation here in the report, it states that after all this was said by the former, you got to think, they called in, and obviously all the names have been redacted, volunteers, current ones, former, former, you know, staff, current staff, all of them. They said that it was obvious that there was absolutely no accountability, none whatsoever for Carl Lentz. In fact, it's said that he pretty much acted independent from Hillsong Australia, the global brand. Many of the staff had said, hey, they even brought this up to him, like, aren't you, you know, a, don't you answer to Hillsong Australia? And they said that Lentz several times, it said, Hillsong Australia, he said, is dead to me. I don't answer to them. Now, Lentz denied that, said he never said that. But according to the report that was put out, it sure looked that way. There was no board or anything like that that Lentz had to answer to. No, nobody held him accountable. He ran roughshod over that entire place, did whatever he wanted. And that was made evident in the report. And then came the topic of the women. And the affairs. Shockingly, Lentz was pretty open and honest about a lot of this, probably because so much of it had come out that to try and deny it would be just insane. But he admitted having three affairs. Now, there were probably more than that, let's be honest, but he admitted to three of them, to cheating on his wife. And he talked about the situations that occurred with the housekeeper, who, Leona Kimes, who is, along with her husband Josh, they are the current, right now, unless something changes, because, you know, with everything with Hillsong, they are the current lead pastors of Hillsong in Boston. So it's kind of funny to me that Leona Kimes is even in any position of leadership based off the things that she did, knowing that Lentz was, in fact, married. And Lentz went into detail. Again, Kimes is the housekeeper here. She had a whole story out, and I covered it last year. Uh, she talked about what Lentz put her through and how you know, she felt betrayed and, and, and um, by Lentz and everything else like this, that she wanted to get out several times but didn't feel that she could. 
but yet she continued to engage in the uh, activity with Lentz, the physical activity that she did. Lentz admitted to it, said their encounters often happened on the couch. Sometimes that they would go up to the, uh, the third floor, to the bedroom up there. Even his wife, Laurel Lentz, caught him and her in the act several times. There was a situation, uh, one story where there was a party that they were at. Everybody was drinking. I mean, this guy had no idea. He just did this stuff in front of his wife. He didn't care. Everybody was drinking. His wife had caught both Lentz and Leona together, kissing and all of this. And then another time where, well, it appeared that Kimes was on the couch and she was nearly passed out falling asleep and there was a blanket over her. And well, Lentz had his hand reportedly under the blanket and was doing some massaging of Kimes underneath the blanket. You can guess where that went to. And it said in the report that Laura Lentz had punched Leona Kimes several times in the face. I would think so. After what you see her doing with your husband there. Had punched her several times and even shoved Carl Lentz in the process. However, Carl Lentz had gaslit her. Told Laura Lentz's wife that you didn't really see what you saw. It got so much to the point where she started to believe it. In this report, she details that I started to ask myself, are my eyes lying to me? Am I not really seeing what I'm seeing here? And I started to believe it. This is how this guy worked, the manipulation that was behind every move that he made. In fact, he even admitted in the interview, he said, and even though he questioned, this was funny, he questioned here the uh, validity of some of his accusers, you know, their integrity. But yet, he said that, you know, but you know what? I'm a really good liar. He said that. I'm a very good liar. And he said, I deliberately covered up my steps with everything that I did to try and make it look as if I did nothing wrong this entire time. You got to think, this is stuff that goes back like 10 years. This guy was the pastor of Hillsong NYC from 2010 to 2020. And all this stuff happened, you know, all throughout the duration of his tenure. But to admit that he was a good liar and that he deliberately knew how to cover up his steps. Is this somebody that was a true Christian that was a man of God? I'm sorry, I don't think so. This is exactly what I've been talking about, about patterns of these people and who they really are. These aren't people that are just making a, a, a slip up here and there. No, no. These were, these were carefully calculated moves and patterns. And yet so many people have still defended individuals like Lentz, organizations like Hillsong. It makes me sick. And then there was the issue of the massages that Lentz received. All of these big megachurch pastors, they love their massages, don't they? Sounds a lot like Ravi Zacharias and all the masseuses that he was involved with. Text messages that his wife, Laura, she saw a lot of this stuff, by the way. She even said that it was a little strange to her that Lentz would be getting these massages, always seemingly at night. And that um, no doubt some hanky-panky was going on here during these massages. Lentz had said that some of the interaction that he has had with some of the women was uh, full-on contact, while other times it was just partial, and that he enjoyed the thrill of sometimes taking it right up to the edge before going with the full thing. He details other women that he was with along the way. This leads right up into his termination in November of 2020. A woman, he says, by the name of, of a Germany, calls her Germany, that had nothing to do with Hillsong, that he had a couple of encounters with. He said that it never went all the way, but it did a lot of other things with her. And then there was the five-month-long affair with the the Muslim woman, Rainan who obviously she wanted the publicity, but still Lentz was perfectly fine with engaging in this five month long affair. Although he claims in his interview that all the times that he went to this woman's house to see her, his intent was always to break up with her. I'm a married man, Lentz would say. But then yet somehow, every single time, 
the two of them would end up interacting, if you know what I mean. This was really a game that Lentz was playing. It was detailed in the report. It seemed like this was something that he enjoyed, you know, role-playing essentially here with this whole thought, oh, I'm going to go break up with her, but then we're going to, we're not really going to do that, and then we're just going to end up getting it on when it's all said and done. And so the heat got to be too much where he said, that's it. My life is ruined. It's all over. All this stuff is coming out. But he said that I'll do what I have to do to bury your name so that this doesn't come out. Except that she wanted it to come out because she was interested in the publicity. And she went around herself and gave all these interviews. And I reported on that when it first came out. There is a lot more in this report. Like I said, there's just so much. I'm just going over some of it with you right here. I could talk about this for an hour. But the fact that the board has decided to release this now, what else might we see coming out in the days, the weeks, and the months ahead? Will there in fact still be an investigation into the board itself like Terry Christ had called for? I hope so. They can release these reports, and that's and that's great. They should have been released at the, you know very early on when it first happened, not later on down the line when Hillsong Board knows that the heat is now up on them. It's been turned up. The whole the whole establishment is crumbling. Like I've said, this report really takes you. It makes you look at Carl Lentz. I mean, he, the guy was already a scum, but when you when you read this and you really go through it and dissect it. Wow, it is scary to see who they put behind the pulpit. It is absolutely just, I, I mean, frightening. And for the people to defend this, I mean, honestly, you should really, truly get yourself to a place with God where you, you look at this situation for what it is and realize you're being deceived. Because I've said this before that when you just crack that door open for compromise a little bit and you try to appeal to the world by doing what the world likes, you're never gonna you're never gonna attract anybody. Attracting the celebrities. No, no, you're more influenced by that than you are actually influencing people for the gospel, which clearly was something that Mr. Lentz was not interested in at all. He did his things for the money, for the control, the power, controlling women, abusing them the way that he did. You know, and, and let me say one more thing about Leona Kimes, the uh, the housekeeper. You know, there was also a report on her seat. She had her own housekeeper, her and her husband, Josh. And in that report, it said that she also had treated her own housekeeper. Much the same way that Carl Lentz treated her. Because, see, that's what happens. You pass that behavior down to somebody that was in it for so long. Not to mention the fact that Kimes was involved with Lentz, you know, physically. But the overworking. Lentz had even said about Kimes that sometimes he goes, I didn't even know if she was there working or if she was there just hanging out. Even Josh Kimes had reportedly gone to Lentz and said... I'm a little concerned with my wife spending so much time at your house. And Lentz had said that, well, if you have such a problem with it, maybe this isn't for you. Maybe Hillsong is not the place for you. Maybe you should leave. That's what he said. Accused him of, of you know, jealousy and all this other stuff. <laughs> but then Kimes passes that sort of behavior down to their housekeeper. They all need housekeepers. They all have servants. I mean, it's, this is not the way the church is intended to work. I guarantee you God's looking down upon this right now and he's not pleased. In the least bit. Like I've said, there is so much more in this. And that link I will have for you down below in the description. You can check it out for yourself. And as always, though, we want to get... When we're in the last days. I mean, there's no doubt Jesus Christ is coming soon. If you have not yet given your life to Christ, you would like to receive him as your Lord and Savior, I want to lead you in a prayer right now to get you to accept Christ. This is a prayer you can do in your own words. But I will give you the steps that you need to bring it before the Lord today. The first thing that you want to do, right off the top, acknowledge that you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. But let me tell you the good news. 
God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world. He died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. It's a big word. Repent means to turn from that sin, not just to say you're sorry, but to turn from lifestyles, habits, whatever it is in your life that goes against the word of God. You ask Jesus to forgive you. He wipes that sin away. The Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. I pray you make that decision today. I will have more on this, as I mentioned down below. You guys can let me know your thoughts. Don't forget the links to donate to our ministry are there as well. It is a great blessing if you could help us out. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys, take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.